Desabafo. It's a Brazilian word that means to get things off one's chest. And today, that's exactly what I'm going to be doing. In 2017, Monique Evel established Desabafo Social, an organization launched in Salvador, in the northeast region of Brazil. Desabafo aimed to unite students, students living in these rural areas, and gained access to a social technology laboratory where opportunities ran rampant. Monique set out to change the lives of these students, these students who never expected to see their talents recognized. And she did just that. At the outset, Monique was never satisfied with the traditional life paths laid out for her, to become either a doctor or a barista. With passions for both engineering and education, she set out to combine the two, while simultaneously earning for herself and changing lives. And today, her project has developed into a venture, addressing issues as crucial as racism. By exploring the new, Monique emerged victorious. Now, I'd like to establish something here. My career plans are not as out of the box as Monique. In fact, I plan to become an electrical engineer. Yes, engineering, something millions of others around the world are either currently pursuing or plan to pursue as well. But I have an idea, an idea that I believe shifts paradigms, steps into new realms, an idea that has been rarely explored. I want to combine blockchain technology with smart grids in the energy sector. Yes, blockchain, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's the same blockchain that has evolved into a sort of cyber cult, with more and more people looking to invest in non-fungible tokens, better known as NFTs. But before I get too ahead of myself, before I get too caught up with my idea, let me simplify this for you. Firstly, what has made blockchain so immensely popular? Two things, decentralization and immutability. Now, these two words might seem a bit confusing to you, but in simpler terms, these two words mean that any energy transaction carried out within this building or within your households, the very energy that is powering my TED Talk today, that energy can be stored in something called a digital ledger and referred to in the future. In simpler terms, this means that my idea has the potential to change the way the entire energy sector functions. And with our world easing into a digital transition ever so rapidly, the potential that such an idea has is vast. And this is just my inkling of an idea. There exist billions of ideas out there in the world from people like me, not just in engineering, but in multiple sectors as well. But the reason why 99% of these ideas are just that, ideas, and have not seen implementation, are because people are afraid to take that initial step. And the 1%, that 1% has realized a very crucial thing, that following the herd and herd mentality can hamper one's innovation. That following and enhancing already existing ideas might definitely be fruitful, but not as fruitful as unleashing the hidden entrepreneur within you. Now, the word innovation is a very familiar one, and it can mean many things is naturally had a very scientific connotation to it. When people think innovation, their mind automatically jumps to technology. But even within the technological realm, people are afraid to go further and progress with their off-grid ideas. But let's take a very famous persona, Elon Musk. I'm sure you all have heard of him. And the man's eccentric nature has definitely been a topic of discussion, very popular discussion, might I add. But think about it. Where would Tesla be, or where would SpaceX be, if Elon Musk decided to sit around and just do nothing with that eccentricity of his? It's that very eccentricity that has taken him to the top of the technological world. And that's what I'm here to tell you today, my dear audience. Capitalize on that eccentricity, and who knows? You could be the next Tesla, or better yet, the only you. Now, speaking of off-grid ideas, let's rewind to my blockchain idea for a second. When I was in 11th grade, I attended a research internship, and that's where my idea sprung to life. My teacher gave me just one word, blockchain. Write your thesis on blockchain. 
I was perplexed at the beginning because as I've said, blockchain has so many endless areas and scope for research. And hence I began this cumbersome process of pouring research papers after research papers. And during this process, two things came to mind. Number one, why are we not utilizing these special properties of blockchain elsewhere? And number two, where else could these properties be put to good use? I'm going to be honest with you here, my audience. To this day, I don't exactly remember how I made the connection. It's a bit miraculous, but I think I owe it to the fact that I had just finished studying Chapter 8, Energy and Physics. But once I thought about it, my first instinct was to do nothing but Google it. See if I had stumbled upon something with substance, or whether I was just one of the herd. And to my immense joy and satisfaction, I found hardly three to four research papers on the idea, and that's when I felt a gush of adrenaline flowing through my veins, because it was that moment that I realized that I was ready to do this, to equip myself with the skills that I need to make this idea a reality. But, 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 let me pause here, because I'm forgetting something here. A tiny four-letter word that goes by the name of fear. The reason why so many such ideas are hushed. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't faced with fear even once during this process. Because think about it. The challenges associated with such an idea are huge. Firstly, the levels of programming I would need are diabolical. Number two, I would need top-notch tools and technologies to experiment with, which I would only gain access to once I attained a certain level of credibility. Let me tell you now, that level is zilch, unfortunately. I would have to account for trial and error, add serious effort to this, serious time, serious brain power, and add this to this melting pot of work and technology. All of this is required to implement my idea in just one city's electrical grid. Now let me put that into perspective for you. There are 195 countries in the world and let's do some simple approximations and say that each country has around a thousand cities. This means that I have to work to implement my idea in 195,000 cities. Let that sink in, because if you're not overwhelmed, I definitely am just thinking about it, and I'm the one that plans to achieve this. A 17-year-old student who will probably be scoffed at once she enters college because the ideas of such an uh, idea of this succeeding, the chances of this idea succeeding are slim to none. Don't you think it would be easier for me to just tread the easy road, succumb to this four-letter word fear, succumb to this immense pressure? That attitude, unfortunately, is what so many others out there possess. They think that their idea is too novel to succeed, and that's what I'm really here to reiterate that there is no such thing and there will never be such a thing as too novel. Innovation and novelty go hand in hand. So go for that off-the-grid idea of yours. Do not let the herd hamper your innovation. Now, I've spoken to you a lot about my idea and about off-grid innovation and not following the herd, but my speech would be of no value if I didn't tell you how to do this, how to take that initial step. Because I do acknowledge that going off the grid requires hefty efforts from each and every one of us. So, what's the recipe? Step one, create a blank slate. Free yourself of your inhibitions and think at the grassroots level. Now, a Belgian non-profit organization that goes by the name of My Machine does exactly this. It asks children for their most surreal, their most bizarre ideas and works into honing them into future potential prototypes, shaping the new. Number two, step number two. Learn to acknowledge that a smooth road does not lay ahead of you. There will inevitably be multiple disruptions, but I do assure you that each and every one of these disruptions is worth it. And step three, own up to your eccentricities, like Tesla did. Instead of thinking of it as weird, Instead of thinking of it as bizarre, think of it as unique. So, my dear audience, the next time any one of you seated here today thinks of a brilliant new idea that they would like to see come to life, but are scared and feel that four-letter word fear creeping up within you, push that word aside and remember one other word, 
There's a bathroom. Get that fear off your chest and just go for it. Thank you.